Hey everybody, this is Naftu from JetBrains again. I didn't think I'd be making a video like this today, but here we are. Um, PyCharm is, well, the PyCharm team has been working on a new IDE called Dataspell. And what Dataspell does is that it answers the question of what, it, what are we doing for data scientists out there, right? So Dataspell is a new IDE uh, that is designed for professional data scientists. At the core of that experience uh, is Jupyter Notebooks. We've worked really hard to make that Jupyter Notebook experience as clean as possible. So without much further ado, I wanted to give a quick overview of what we're doing in data spell. This is the first uh, really public EAP. We've had EAPs before, but this is the important one, and we're going to have a release soon after. So. This is an overview and we hope you like it and we'd really appreciate some feedback. JetBrains Dataspell is a brand new IDE that is designed for professional data scientists. Let's gain an overview of what it can do for us. This is what you get when you first launch Dataspell. You're asked for what environment you want. In this case, we have Conda, and I am going to go ahead and use Conda to launch our environment and workspace. The first thing that I'm going to do is attach a directory directly to this workspace. I'm going to click on the attach workspace button and then pick a directory where I have all my sample files. Dataspell has support for Python files, Jupyter notebooks, as well as CSV files. In this case, I'm just going to open up the notebook file and run a few cells just to demonstrate what Dataspell can do. We've really gone back to the drawing board on our notebook support so that it is more fluid and just works better. To start off, anywhere you see text is a markdown block. For code blocks, you have both code as well as the output. In other words, it works exactly the way you'd expect a Jupyter Notebook to work, but with all the awesome PyCharm features as well. For example, here, when we select read CSV, we also get the auto import for pandas. We also see code completion for files in read CSV. Now I'm going to do another PyCharm thing, which is to use extract variable and call that data. And that brings us to our next data spell feature, which is an awesome data frame rendering engine. So once this is loaded, we'll be able to see the data frame and we can scroll down it and sideways, all the good stuff that you'd expect. But to add to that, you can open up this data frame in a new tab as well. Now, going back to the notebook itself, we can keep running the different cells by pressing shift enter. You'll notice that all of this is running in the background. It's managed. The Jupyter notebook is run by data spell. And now when we get to something that generates images, we can also see those images being rendered inside of the notebook. Data spell also supports the ability to debug within a notebook. So in this case, I'm going to hit the debug button after having set a breakpoint, and I'm going to see the debug tool window pop up. Now you have your regular step overs and step intos, but you also have the ability to view variables as series, which is pretty cool. You also have the ability to evaluate any expression and add that as a watch. And you of course get code completion for it. And you can also view it as a data frame or a series or an array, whatever the variable works with. Okay, so that's enough of notebooks. What about Python files? Well, let's open up titanic.py. You can run the entire file if you want to, but if you take a look, you will see cell dividers. These cell dividers allow you to work with parts of your code at a time. And you can see that they have a special icon next to them as well. So we're just going to execute that particular block and we're going to see it show up in the console. You can also run a single line by clicking this button. You can also run only what you select. So here, if I just select data and click it again, I can see that only the data frame is showing up. And yes, the data frame is rendered very nicely inside of the console as well. You can also see images rendered in the console as well as see the variable viewer on the right hand side of the console. Well, that's all folks. Thank you so much for watching. We also want to thank everybody who helped us make data spell possible from the early users to the bug reporters. Thank you so much. 
This is still very much a work in progress. It is our first EAP, our very first public EAP, and we appreciate all the feedback that we can get. So keep that feedback coming.